Good morning, guys. It's TJ. Now let's shoot that. Um, yesterday, I shot a video and put it up. It was about the Will Smith murder, right? And at the time of the Will Smith murder, I didn't really know about the murders that took place involving two Southern University students, Annette January and Lashante Benton. Annette January from Gary, and Gary, Indiana, and Lashante Benton from Lake Charles, Louisiana, right? This was two young ladies that, you know, it's like my kid. I have kids up there in Baton Rouge at college, you know, at a college party, at an event. And these two thug terrorists decide they're going to open fire and shoot at each other. And these girls, these beautiful girls, man, caught in the crossfire, right? Dead. And the video I did yesterday expressed my outrage at this particular group that's terrorizing our inner cities. And my heart goes out this morning to the parents of these two beautiful, beautiful young ladies. Um, I have I have two kids in that area at college. One of them live, his dorm was a couple of blocks away from where the shooting took place. This shooting was closer to LSU than it was to actually Southern. And it's heartbreaking, man. It's heartbreaking and it's frustrating at the same time because no parent should have to drop their kid off at college and get a call like this and have to plan a funeral service, right? But this is what's, this is what's happening as a result of these thugs, these, these guys who want to be Thugs, and what they what they are is they 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 really they they're terrorists. They 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 terrorize our communities, and now they're starting to terrorize our college campuses. And th this is why you know I've never I've never jumped on board of things like Black Lives Matter, but when you have two black two black thugs. Kill two beautiful college students. Can't get no outrage. Can't get no protest on that. Like if there ever was a perfect time to protest something, right? Finding the homes of the two monsters that opened up fire, gunfire, and a party, finding their house and protesting in front of their house. That's a good cause for Black Lives Matter. For me, that would truly express that you you have outrage when any black life is lost. Not just black lives that are lost to police and crooked police officers, but black lives that are lost at the hands of parent parenting failures. And I call this I call these guys who murdered these these beautiful students parenting failures because they're about the same age. As a matter of fact, one of them is a dropout. Right? Dropped out. And I've said it so many times, so many times, that when you see cases like this, when you see these little... I, I, t I said on a video yesterday, it's age 17 to 28, right up in there. It's a very violent group. And it's the reason why they're a very violent group is because of the parenting failures that have taken place. Those kids are no different than the kids in my generation, the kids in my mama's generation, and the kids in my grandfather's generation. There ain't no difference. The difference is the style of parenting changed. This is that 19, that, that late 80s, 90s group right here. Late 80s, 90 group. This group here, right, with the different styles of, of, of parenting that was introduced, this group here, are, they're now approaching adulthoods and 
they now have the sense that they could do whatever they want and they're just simply going to be placed in a timeout. Right? And unfortunately, now the timeout is prison for murder. Right? This is, a, this is the perfect cause for something like a Black Lives Matter, but we're not going to see no protest from them. They're not even going to clear their throat because addressing when a African American kills another African American is not newsworthy enough and we all know that with the movement manipulation and the media manipulation they're not going to get involved in anything like that because there's no attention but the opportunity to jump in front of Clinton face or jump in front of Trump face with some Black Lives Matter nonsense they will jump at those opportunities but here is the perfect opportunity to protest but you protest the people who raised these two individuals. That, see, we can't, the, the law is going to address them. The law is going to address them for their actions. They're going to go to jail for what they've done. But there has to be some sort of awareness focused on the parents that delivered these monsters amongst our communities who, who, because of their failures to discipline, to teach morals, to teach respect for people, to teach respect for property, right? To detach them from the false reality of rap music, to detach them from the fascination of people like Lil Wayne and all of these, all of these fake rappers like Tupac, people like that who never was a thug but acted like a thug. And convinced the whole world he was a thug and started this whole thug movement. Now you got now you got black kids running around thinking that the way to resolve a conflict is to shoot. When I was in high school, we had a disagreement. We duped it out. Ain't nobody got shot. You got a bloody nose. But you went, you went your way, you went, the other person went that way. Now you got these little cowards. Little bitty cowards like this guy here who pulls out a gun and it's two of them. It's two of them. And they just shooting at each other. Pow, 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 pow. And then kill these two girls. Meanwhile, my son was at a Smash Brothers competition. Video game competition. Doing what college students are supposed to do. Have fun, enjoy college, get back, get ready for class the next day. It's parenting, I'm telling you, it's parenting. That's why I teach my kids to profile. I teach them to generalize. It's a survival tactic. It's a survival mechanism. I set my kid down. I say, hey, you don't want to hang with this group. You don't want to be, you don't have no involvement in this particular incident here. If you see three black guys and one little white girl and they all in the room about to have some sex, you don't want to be nowhere around that. I had this conversation. We sit down and we, I list all of the possibilities and he was sitting there and he was just rolling his eyes like, please hurry up and finish this. But he get it, you know. When I dropped him off at college, I ain't had, I ain't say nothing to him. His mom ain't say nothing to him because we had, we had, we we've done. There was so much talking we did to him, so much talking I did to my daughter that by the time I dropped him off at college, I ain't have to say nothing else. What I was going to cover in that little short span of time? It's parenting. I keep saying it. I'll keep saying it. The only way you get a thug kid is with parenting. A parent made some sort of decision that placed that child in an environment, whether it was a low income environment, a section eight environment, a hood environment, there was some sort of parenting decision. And when that child got into that environment, the parenting stopped because what we do as black people, we don't want nobody to address this. But we stop parenting at six years old, at 16 years old. At 16, we stop. We figure they're men. I've even heard people say that, you know, now you're the man of the house. And the kid is 16 years old, and they're talking about he's the man of the house. No, he's 16 years old. He's not no man of the house. Just because you're a single parent don't mean that the 16-year-old is the man of the house. And these are things that... 
See these, see when I, when I talk about these things, you, but a lot of people don't like me to get down into this because I'm getting down into the business of black people. They don't like you to talk about it. They don't want these things discussed. Then that little Negro who thought he was the man of the house, of course he gets him a gun. And he, he learns from rap songs how to handle disputes. And that's how you get the murder of Annette and Lashante. To the parents that have to drive down from Indiana and have to drive from Lake Charles, you know, I grieve with you this morning. I'm upset with you this morning. I've thought about these girls all night. I've been on, I've been expressing my feelings on this all night. This is a reason for outrage. And, and I feel that the parents of these individuals, they need to be, they need to be shamed at the exact, they are, they sharing the responsibility of this because they failed and because they failed to do their jobs as parents and raise these people to be respectful adults. We have two beautiful students, two beautiful young ladies dead today. Y'all continue to pray for the parents of these students. And when you see these, when you see these parenting failures around your communities and you know them, they wear the uniform. All of them got a uniform. They wear their pants any kind of way. They look any kind of way. Identify them. I am hereby giving you permission to profile them. But why not? They have worked so hard to be in that category. So let's just go on and put them in that category. This is what they want to be. So if they want to look any kind of way, dress any kind of way, they want to break away from society, they don't want to conform, you can't educate them, you can't give them a job, they don't get got tattoos all in their face and tears under their eyes and stuff on their neck, then go in on and put them in that category. And let's start profiling them early. And get them from amongst us. Them and their parents. TJ, LSU dad.